Hi there, it's uh, Jax, and I'm going to do a knife review on the Buck Model 345, uh, otherwise known as the Buck Vantage. This particular Buck um, is the uh, one with the 420 high carbon blade steel. Uh, so it's Model 345, it's not the Buck Pro with uh, S30V blade steel. So, uh, yeah, so. Uh, like I said, it had 420 high carbon <clears throat> blade steel, which is Buck's kind of entry level um, steel. It's kind of their budget base steel. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it won't hold an edge as well as uh, some of today's modern super steels. But uh, all in all, it's uh, supposed to be a pretty decent uh, steel. <clears throat> so anyways, um, what we have here is a medium size uh, everyday carrying type of knife. Uh, it is um, roughly uh, maybe just coming in under 8 inches long in its uh, total overall length. Uh, so the handle is about um, 4 and some inches and the uh, blade is uh, 3.5. I don't have the exact uh, uh, measurements but um, the blade is uh, somewhere about uh, three and a half with uh, the cutting surface um, a little bit less than three and a half uh, because of the um, the grind and whatnot the you know ricasso or whatever uh, so anyways um, yeah this is a drop point knife as you can see so a drop point of course starts at the uh, spot at the um, near the hilt area and drops to the point. Uh, it has a full belly which uh, is referring to the amount of curvature in the blade and uh, the reason for that uh, for this format drop point and uh, the full belly blade is that uh, it excels at uh, hunting tasks um, and in general slicing tasks um, specifically skinning uh, animals uh, that's where the whole uh, a lot of belly comes in uh, really handy is for a hunter also around the kitchen um, preparing food and basic everyday utility stuff such as cutting rope or um, whatever whatever you're doing uh, you know general utility so uh, this knife here has a what is known what I would say is a high hollow grind um, blade profile uh, grind on it I should say and so um, so the uh, hollow grind is fairly high in my estimation um, uh, hollow ground means that um, the blade is um, ground with a radius on both sides so uh, rather than a flat grind where um, the grind is just flat it's actually concaved in a bit uh, rather than flat so I uh, it's whatever if you know what a hollow grind, grind blade is a hollow grind blade um, is really good at slashing if you see um, straight razors some uh, straight razors from uh, the olden days where people shave their face with them would have a hollow grind um, it comes to a really thin uh, you can ho hollow grind a blade to a really thin um, thickness and achieve a, uh, a pretty sharp, <laughs> pretty extraordinarily sharp um, cutting cutting uh, tool. So, anyways, uh, where was I there? Um, yeah, it's a ho it's a high hollow ground blade, drop point 420 high carbon blade steel. Maybe the Rockwell scale hardness is somewhere between, I don't know, 55, 57. Don't quote me on this because I don't know for sure, but it's uh, not up there in the 60s or anything. It's uh, somewhere in the mid-50s, I, I believe, which would mean this is uh, easy to sharpen and um, will hold a satisfactory edge. Um, actually, this blade steel does pretty good for that out here, all in all. Uh, anyways... Um, <clears throat> Um, where else was I going with this? Um, I forget what I was going to say. Yeah, so it's a folding knife. I'll, maybe I'll pick up and remember it. But anyways, so it's a folding knife. And this particular knife has a um, stainless steel clip. Um, 
The knife itself carries in your pocket tip up and the, a lot of people like that because as you slide it of course from your pocket and open it, it is already in the forward position where if the tip, uh, pardon me, whereas if the clip was over here it would be um, strange. You would open the knife and uh, you'd have to uh, open it and then flip it around to get the blade pointing forward. So anyways as you draw it from your pocket and deploy the blade it's pointing uh, in front of you already so that's uh, so it has a two position pocket clip rather than a four position clip meaning that uh, it's a left or right and uh, you can just uh, undo the uh, torque screws turn it around and clamp it in and you could have the clip on the left or right hand side uh, <clears throat> in case you were a lefty uh, so it does uh, has an ambidextrous um, kind of format to it. Also, uh, this knife here uh, comes with a cutout in the blade. Now, what the cutout does, uh, I believe what it does here, and I should also note that this um, piece of zip tie attached to it does not come with a knife. The knife, uh, if you can imagine the blade without this, that's the way it came. This is my uh, homemade uh, Emerson opener. Um, uh, device here so as I draw it from my pocket it catches the interior of my pocket and opens the blade by itself so anyways the knife itself does not come with that uh, uh, black piece of metal there uh, anyways um, getting back to the uh, cutout here that might be there for Buck to um, give you a place to insert your thumb in the cutout as uh, and allow you to use your thumb to uh, to uh, open the blade, to deploy the blade. Um, also it should be noted that this knife is also uh, featuring a flipper hilt. Now a flipper hilt is a protrusion of metal that juts out and as, uh, as you flick your finger it uh, activates and opens the blade. So that's a flipper hilt. So by flicking it uh, opens it. So this knife has a few uh, methods of deploying the blade. You can either use the thumb stud like a Spyderco style knife or the flipper hilt to uh, to swing it open. So it has that uh, dual uh, functionality there. Now this hole might be here. Uh, you might be able to use it for other things like lashing the um, lashing the blade to the end of a stick and making a makeshift spear or something maybe uh, like that or perhaps I don't know attaching attaching it to something I'm not sure it, if it would be any good for attaching a, to a backpack since it would uh, might jostle open on you or whatever but um, so anyways uh, the handle material and construction of the knife is um, the handle material is made out of something called paper stone. Uh, now, I'll give you a look at that. So this is paper stone, and paper stone is—I'm um, not too 100% uh, sure what paper stone is, but I believe it is some sort of uh, recycled paper material that's been compressed. I could be wrong on this. You might want to Google it, but I think it's uh, some sort of. Uh, paper material that's been compressed under extraordinary or extremely high compression and uh, possibly impregnated with uh, epoxy resins and then compressed to sandwich it into a extremely solid and um, uh, perhaps a layered material it's uh, maybe maybe it's like G10 or carbon fiber or fiberglass and that it's a material that is uh, or maybe not carbon fiber, but maybe it's like G10 in principle that it's something injected with uh, epoxy resin and then uh, compressed to form a uh, uh, singular structure, tight structure uh, material. So it's pretty hard. It will chip if you drop it, but it's pretty durable as well. Um, paper stone might have some benefits to it. It might be uh, uh, impervious to chemicals or um, rot or mildew. Uh, <clears throat> water might not be able to absorb into it. I'm not sure. It might have, uh, you know, uh, p 
particular qualities. I'm not too sure about it, but um, uh, it might be impervious to uh, temperature change too, uh, and it might be real stable and. Um, who knows, maybe it's electricity proof, I'm not sure, but temperature change, it might be uh, uh, impervious to that, meaning if this handle is made out of aluminum and you're using it on a cold day, what? Oh, I'm getting some, uh, some shadow play here. Oops, I'm making a mess. The sun's just coming up and it's like five in the morning and... So anyways, um... Where was I going with that? Uh, yeah, so if this handle was made out of aluminum and you were uh, holding it, you know, in the uh, winter or whatever without gloves on, it'd be pretty cold. Or conversely, if it was extremely hot and you're in the desert and this was lying out in the sun, it might be hot. But anyways, you know, it might still get hot because it's black. I'm not sure, but uh, paper stone might have some qualities that I'm not 100% uh, for sure. But uh, you know what? It feels good. It's not the grippiest thing in the world, but nor is it the slippiest, uh, slipperiest thing in the world. It looks pretty good. Um, and yeah, and so inside this thing here too, we have um, stainless steel liners, I believe. And they're not skeletonized, meaning that uh, there's no cutouts in there to, to lighten the weight of it or anything like that. Um... It has one uh, standoff right here, and uh, I don't believe any screws are in that. I could be wrong, but uh, yeah. So, anyways, it uh, non-skeletonized uh, full stainless steel liners. Um, it has this block of either aluminum or stainless steel back here uh, to add support uh, to to uh, torque. Uh, torque bolt the um, uh, handle scales onto the frame and a place to and it also allows a, a, the place to uh, attach the clip now this knife is put together with torque screw construction um, probably stainless steel I would imagine if the rest of the knife is um, well, that's another thing I forgot to mention uh, jumping back 420 high carbon uh, bucks 420 high carbon blade steel is a stainless steel it has about 0.6% uh, carbon and I'm not sure what the exact chromium uh, ratio is but it's got to be over 14 for it to be considered as stainless steel so this is a stainless steel for those that uh, don't want a plain carbon steel that will rust easily on them I mean if this was uh, plain carbon steel uh, the blade would discolor and uh, just by cutting an onion or um, an orange or, or something like that so uh, anyways uh, stainless steel back to the uh, handle material here um, where else was I what else was I saying yes it has torque screw construction um, probably stainless hardware and uh, so this particular knife is a liner lock the advantage is so when you open it up a spring tension piece of the liner will uh, spring and engage the base of the um, uh, the tang so I don't know if I can catch that but as watch this piece here as I open it it should swing this way and where that cutout is will engage the bottom of the tang and now the blade is locked in um, liner locks are decent uh, they're nice because to close the knife now I just pushed back that spring tension thing and clipped the blade back in and every time I uh, repeat the process it closes on it or um, or vice versa uh, liner locks I like them they're handy they're one-handed uh, you can uh, use it one-handed um, the liner material is about um, 1 16th of an inch uh, thick so it's pretty tough but uh, liner locks I don't know the actual rating of this lock but a liner lock can be overcome by forces um, so you might not want to be doing uh, it's not like a fixed blade where you can do uh, 
a lot of hard work. It is what it is, and it's a folding knife.